In this video, I sat down with KDP seller Janice Papworth, who increased her Q4 sales by 66% year over year with the help of Amazon ads. Janice, thanks so much for coming on uh, our channel. Uh, really excited to have you here. Well, thank you for having me, Cameron. I'm really excited to be talking to the real person. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I, let's just jump right in. Uh, maybe it'd be helpful for everybody watching this if you could just kind of tell us a little bit about your Amazon journey. Um, <clears throat> what happened was uh, I always brought up my children and didn't work work, properly work. And so when they got a bit older and I had a bit more time, I decided to start a blog because I wanted to do something from home that would kind of make money. And I wanted to monetize it. And I thought, what can I blog about? What do I know about? I'm obviously know about mum's stuff, but everybody's doing that. And my husband's, um, well, he's a railway expert, really. He's very big on railways. So we started a railway blog. And I did all the SEO and the Facebook and the Twitter. And he did the actual writing, the articles, because he knew all about heritage railways and that sort of okay. thing. And then I went on a Facebook course with Rachel Miller. I don't know if you've heard of her, but she's a big Facebook guru. Okay. And um, she had Jacob Topping on as a kind of, as a guest. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, the most the easiest thing to sell anyone is a t-shirt and he started talking about merch by amazon and i thought god that's good i could sell them railway t-shirts because not many people are doing that and it's uk and you know it's not the same in america so we made some railway t-shirts we got accepted into merch that mm -hmm. was the first thing what about um, what time period how long ago was that it was um for april 2018 Okay, we started about at the same time. I was, I think, I was around March or April as well. So that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I'm yeah. Quality on merch, <laughs> but um, I'm not on KDP, yeah. which we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit. So maybe you know, probably some balance there. So I started making railway shirts and selling them through the blog, and then I thought, what am I doing? You know, I'm waiting for him to write the next blog, and he's off doing something else or working or. I could be doing t-shirts on anything. So I started doing other t-shirts really. And that's how I got into merch. And then I joined the Facebook groups and things like that. I do things quite thoroughly. And um, I joined the Merch Girl Boss group and Amy, I can't pronounce her surname, Amy Hertzinger, something like that. I'm not familiar. Amy, she was talking about KDP so I started okay. looking at that as well. And then I picked up on people like Kelly Publish and Rachel Harrison Sund okay. and really got into KDP. And that worked out better for me than merch, but I still do merch. I do them both. And then I found out about merch jar because I've always followed RJ. And I think okay. you did an interview with RJ on YouTube yeah. about merch yeah, jar. But, yep. I've been on his channel a few times. Yeah. So I've always followed RJ and Matt. And I was in their secret group for a bit, but then they got a bit more Etsy based. And I didn't okay. want to do Etsy because it involves a lot of customer service and everything. And I'm not in the US. So I, I didn't want to be with the time difference and having to deal with people. That wasn't <laughs> the point of doing the passive income, really. Right. The passive income was so that I could cope with family issues or um, we could go and travel, we could go away or whatever without having yeah. to worry about somebody's t-shirt hasn't arrived and they want it now. Yeah, absolutely. I don't blame, I mean, I'm in the US and I don't wanna deal with uh, the people here uh, no. with customer <laughs> service, so. Uh, so that's that's pretty amazing. Uh, so, you're, so you're on Merch, you're on KDP, um, been selling on Merch since 2018 and you started KDP, was that the same year? Was that, did that come uh, a little bit later? I started in October of 2018, yeah. Okay. So same year, so pretty close together. Um, yeah. When it comes to KDP and Merch, what marketplaces are you selling on? Is it UK and US, or are you in some of the other marketplaces as well? Yeah, um, you, US Merch is definitely the biggest, mm -hmm. but I find I can pick niches in the UK that are not being covered in the US. So that helps me quite a lot. Okay. And then I've done some European ones, but nothing major really. Okay, gotcha. I just dabbled. 
things I thought were suitable, things that didn't have words on them. Okay. Um, I've never got too involved with pot sockets or throw pillows or tote bags. You can't do everything, can yeah. you? You've got to yeah. stick to what you know, really. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, I think most people find that you, once you find a niche that works for you, just kind of, you know, accelerate that, pour gasoline on that. And you said KDP was working, uh, you had you had more success with KDP than with Amazon? Yeah, much more. Um, I did start splitting my time initially, and I had a big love for the t-shirts, kind of, and I sort of almost resented having to do a bit of KDP work. <laughs> but then I realized KDP, I'm like, what am I doing? You know, I'm looking at my sales, and I've sold five t-shirts today, but I sold that many books before I woke up this morning. <laughs> Because obviously the sales come in overnight for me, so when I wake up, yeah, that's when I've sold stuff. So I that's a that's the best feeling ever is knowing <laughs> making money, sleeping. That's I know. For, for me. I that's like one of the best things. Just waking up and you see how much money you made. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, as far as like KDP, because KDP is kind of just a different beast than Amazon or merch by Amazon altogether. Where I mean, very, merch is just very much a graphic which you'd have that with KDP, you got your cover, but then you have everything else inside the book, which you don't have to do with merch. So it's a lot more involved. Um, could you tell us, and you don't have to go into like detail of niches or anything like that, whatever you want to share. Um, are you doing more of like low content? This is just based on my like reading, because I'm in some KDP groups. And I just try to say, I have a KDP account, just I think I have one book on there just from testing. Um, are you doing more like low content or are you doing some more of the higher content? Are you writing books yourself? Maybe you should just, share some information on what kind of kind of products i suppose you're selling there since it's a little broader than just hey t-shirts on amazon i i started out with tangent templates and they've got very basic templates so graph paper and lines but that quickly became saturated i mean what was interesting was in december 2018 i went to well, it might have been january 2019 actually i went to the merch uk conference the first and only one because the next one got cancelled yeah. with COVID. COVID, yeah. And um, I asked everybody there. There was about, I don't know, 60, 70 people there. And I kept saying to them, are you doing KDP as well? And they were like, no, we're not doing KDP. This is strange because I'm doing quite well on KDP. Um, but people hadn't got into it from the merch side. So I was following more traditional people that had always done KDP and never done merch. Okay. And so I started out with the very basic stuff, but as the merch people came in, that became just so saturated. And a lot of it was just absolute rubbish. And one thing Amazon is, is big about, and I'm big about too, is that you give the customer value. I don't want to buy something off Amazon and get it and think that's a load of rubbish. I'll just send it back. And KDP are not taking our returns off us at the moment like merch, but I think they will at some point because I've never seen a return in my dashboard ever. Really? And yet people must be sending them back, hmm. mustn't they? So I, would, they I would imagine, like, I can't imagine Amazon not accepting a return. Like that blows my mind if Amazon just yeah. wouldn't accept a return on basically anything since they're so customer centric. I mean, if anybody has been that's watching this has been selling on Amazon, they know the customer is the only thing Amazon cares about. Us as yeah. the sellers, they don't at all. Um, so if you're anybody watching this is new, that's that's what it is. Amazon only cares about the customer, not the sellers. Um, so, so that's really interesting. As creators, we have to care about the customer as well. Because sooner or later, Amazon will crack down on all that rubbish. They're bound to. They're bound to start charging for every book you upload like Etsy do, or they're or they're going to re start reviewing accounts where they've got thousands of books, or they're going to start limiting us on how many books we can upload. So I do more, I do quite a variety of books, whatever kind of fires my interest that week. Okay. Um, and I tend to do, I wouldn't say they're low content, but I don't write reams and reams because that, I don't get interested in that. I quite like the visual side of things, so I enjoy the covers the most but I also do a lot of research into the keywords. Um, and I try and do things that are a bit different or first to market or, so I'm not necessarily researching on Amazon itself and following the herd. For sure. instance, I like watching my local news and I live in quite a low crime area. 
I live in the southwest of England. It's quite beachy. It's quite low crime. So they have to fill the local news up with what people are doing. And they, they sometimes have the most interesting things on there. And I think, well, those people could do with a little book to help them along. <laughs> so, I mean, magnet fishing, for example. I haven't done it because I don't think there's that big a demand. But apparently people are going with magnets to fish in rivers and see what they can pull up. And, of course, they're pulling up, you know, little grenade that somebody's left there for 20 years and having to call the bomb squad out <laughs> and things like that. But people are actually doing this as a hobby. They're going out with a magnet on a fishing line and fishing metal things out of canals and rivers. That's amazing. Yeah, and you could have and a T-shirt just so, you know, I survived the grenade <laughs> whatever of 2020. Uh, that's, I mean, that that's a really interesting approach. Um, and... I think especially for anybody that's just getting started with these kind of things is that using your own knowledge and interest to find products to sell because there's, I, I mean, we, you, you mentioned saturation and, and there is a lot of that, especially with merch. I'm, I'm sure, sure a lot of that was just, hey, take this teacher, all my t-shirt designs, we're just gonna throw these on uh, journals and try to sell them and see what happens and sticks. Um, but there's still so many different niches or what you, what you said, just like these small stories or what whatnot that can become products. And like that's infinite. There's no end to that, especially if you can bring a unique spin to it and not just what you said, just kind of follow the crowd and do what everything everyone else is doing just because you see it selling. And the other thing is, if you make a book that's got more interior, it's very hard to copy. So on merch, all my designs have been just copied everywhere. And it's so disheartening when you go and look for something and your bestseller's there and you report it and then you have to report it again and again. It's just really disheartening. But on merch, on KDP, it's much harder to copy an entire book unless they buy it and somehow scan it in. I have to... okay if, you, if they buy it at least they're, you're getting something out of it Mercer just <laughs> not... hitting a button to download I've seen it where they've copied my um, cover and front page but the inside sure. is just lines which is not the point and then I've also seen it where they've actually done the look inside pages mm -hmm. and they've copied mine and then I found it they they'd actually pinched pages from other people's books and meshed them all into one book <laughs> And so I was writing to Amazon and saying, this is, these two pages are from my book, but the other pages, I bought their book in the end to see what mess they've made of it. But the other pages are from so-and-so's book and the other pages are from so-and-so's book. And I could reverse image search them or I could see other writing. I could search that and find which books they'd stolen the interior pages out of. Because they could only use the look inside pages. So right, yeah. they weren't consistent through the whole book. They'd have That's to use crazy. four or five books and mesh them together. I haven't heard of that, but that's, it doesn't surprise me. I guess like any of that copying and stuff doesn't surprise me anymore, but that's, you actually bring up a really good point is with just the barriers to entry where merch has virtually none, um, as far as like stealing a product or copying a product, um, versus somewhat something like a private label product that you might be selling on seller central where you have a manufacturer designing a product that's kind of on the opposite end of merch. Then there's KDP kind of like in between there where um, there's more barrier to entry. It's uh, you're developing more of a product, but not quite as much as, you know, finding a manufacturer and having to deal with shipments and so forth. So it's kind of KDP, KDP kind of has a nice middle ground uh, between that where you don't have to worry as much about, I guess, competition. I'm, I, I imagine there's less competition just because of that. And I know for me, I haven't gotten too much into KDP myself just because of those barriers to entry personally. It's a little more, uh, I guess, intimidating. Yes, I mean, the simpler your interior is, the easier it is to steal, isn't it? So when it comes to your KDP and merch, um, the merch platforms uh, and your sales distribution, how many products do you have on each of them if you'd like to share that? And do you see that most of your revenue is made comes from just one or two or a few products, or is that more kind of evenly distributed across all of your products? Well, I had a little look. On merch, I've got just over 2,000 designs, which, I mean, I don't do a lot of work on my merch account at the moment. I'm, you know, I'm more doing KDP. So sure. that's T-shirt designs, not 
pot suffocates or anything. Okay. On KDP, I've got 1,600 books. Okay. Oh, wow. So less. But um, I've only got 10 that have sold over 1,000. Wow. Of those 1,600. I looked to see how many had sold, and 1,000 of them have sold. So 600 have never, ever sold. And they're probably the ones I did at the beginning that when I was learning the process and learning about keywords and things like that, because I've never gone back and beefed them up, changed the keywords or anything. Sure. I've got one hero product which sold over a hundred thousand. Whoa, <laughs> that's amazing. I am very one pleased product. myself actually. <laughs> you should be, that's absolutely amazing. <laughs> So uh, yeah, well, congratulations. <laughs> uh, when was that book upload? Is that one that's been up for a while? Or is that one that just kind of took off like gangbusters right away? Um, I did it in October 2019. Okay, so, so was it what are we, a year and a half? Three quarter fours. That's absolutely amazing. Um, and I, I guess one thing I want to point out with um, to our audience is if you haven't had a product reach some of these higher ranks, really low BSRs, is how many sales the top ranked products are getting versus the ones that aren't. I mean, it's not just kind of a linear uh, curve to it where it's like, oh, there's probably selling, you know, I'm selling like 10 a month, they're probably selling like 100 a month. It's like, no, it's it's a hockey stick where it just goes straight up. The, the top tiers are getting far more impressions and clicks and sales than just even products that are ranking a little bit lower. And I, I think that really highlights it. Yeah, I mean, the first year it's sold, the first quarter four, and it does sell the most in quarter four, it sold well in America. And then I realized that it had reasonably good rank in the UK and Canada as well. And I started pushing it then in the other two markets too. But the thing is that if you can use ads to push a book in KDP, then Amazon actually kind of rewards you because in KDP, what you're looking for is also to get into the also boughts and into the person who looked at this, looked at this. That's like free advertising from Amazon. Yeah. And once you start getting into the charts as well, and they also have um, Christmas gift guides that you can get into. So you can get the Christmas gift guide badge and then you appear in the Christmas gift guides that Amazon run, then then that's what you're looking for, really. So your ad advertising is helping to sell them. But what you're trying to do is get Amazon's attention, get Amazon to notice that book and get it into the not just the bestseller badge, but your Christmas gift guide badge or your Amazon chart badge or your when person buys this, they also buy this because then you're getting free advertising from Amazon. They, they send emails out saying, we noticed you looked at this, how about buying this? Mm -hmm. You want to get into those emails. And once your book starts to convert and sell, then Amazon push it as well. And the advertising keeps it there in that. Uh, almost in like that a Amazon. feedback loop, right? Where it just kind of snowballs just from, you know, the ads and, you know, that kind of snowballs into like those different badges. And I, I haven't heard of some of those since they're not available and merch pretty much get what Amazon's uh, Amazon choice or whatever is the only ones I've really seen over on the, the merch side. So that's really interesting that. Oh, they're, they're all there in at Christmas as well. And the Christmas gift guides only Christmas, obviously. But if you go, I looked on Amazon US, it is all there. I don't think okay. I made it. Well, just that. as far I'm just not familiar, I guess, with books as much in general, but it's, it yeah. makes sense. I mean, books are kind of like the OG uh, Amazon product, right? Like that's what they started with and what's been up the longest versus merch, which is relatively new. Um, you know, all things considered, it's only a few years old um, compared to books they've been selling for, you know, since they, their inception. But uh, I, when it comes to the ads, um, just to kind of throw this in, how would you describe like your strategy? Would you say you're like, uh, pretty aggressive with ads? Are you more conservative? If, it, if Do you have like a, what does that kind of look like? Or how would you describe yourself when it comes to running ads? Um, I try and keep them in profit. So the first thing to do is to know what your ACOS is for profit, where your break even is really. Okay. Um, I tend to run the lottery campaign since I found out about those from you this year. So I run um, t-shirt lottery I've got a pop socket locked lottery, although I don't okay. have many pop sockets. I've got um, a book lottery, obviously, and I've got a 
Amazon clothing, not T-shirts, like sweatshirts and stuff, lottery. Okay. And I've got those running in US, UK and Canada. Canada's only books, obviously. We haven't oh, got right. T-shirts. Okay, so you're doing lotteries for the KDP products as well. Um, yeah. And you, you'd have to segment those by market. It's not like you can have like your Canadian and US into one campaign, just the way Amazon ads works, they split that up. And for anybody watching that's not familiar with lottery campaigns, um, that's essentially just a campaign with a, a single ad group with all of your products in it or some uh, segment of products. So like if it's just t-shirts, so there's a lot of different varieties. Um, we have a video on uh, lottery uh, campaigns and how to get those started and what those are. I'll link that in the description of this video so you have that as well. And then once they start to sell, if they're selling for something seasonal, so the shirts are often seasonal, um, sure. then I'll run their own campaigns using your method i'm not very good at ads so you have to tell me what to do cameron but i watch the videos and i study it very carefully i make notes and i think oh i should be doing that and if it's really complicated i think i can't cope with that i just i'm just on the light version you know they keep it simple so i do the three ads i run the auto first on the individual product if that starts selling then i run the testing and the performance ads and I use Merch Jar to take the keywords from the auto ads into the testing and performance. Now, that's new for me this year. I haven't done that before. Okay. I knew I should kind of be doing it because RJ. But it's a lot of work. It's so much work to do by yeah. hand. And RJ kept banging on about it with the shirts. And I'm like, oh, I really can't face that. I just leave the auto ads running. It'd be fine. And, Which um, they do work. But, um, I know a lot of people are kind of, or some people are um, with auto ads some they can have that stigma it's like well it's amazon doing it it's their algorithm so they must not work it's all it manual all day and maybe some like older school uh ppc advertisers that's always been like with google ads like no you don't want auto it's all manual and that's kind of carried over from my, what i've seen but auto ads work right like they've that's how i started with amazon ads and just seeing that success and especially with how easy they are to get, to run um, especially versus other platforms like a Facebook um, ads, for example. But um, so you mentioned y your auto ads you've seen success with, right? Yeah. And then I didn't realize things like you shouldn't turn them off. So I would turn them off each year and then start a new one the following year. Okay. But I've learned this year to just turn them down and not turn them off. So nothing's been turned off. <laughs> They're all still there. Um, and are you seeing a difference in that over the last year, kind of these changes in strategy that you've had? Have you noticed a difference in your ad performance? Um, I think it's the turning them off thing has got to come round again because things mostly are the things that take off are seasonal rather than evergreen. Okay. Um, particularly with the T-shirts. So I'm looking forward to, I started about May with Merch Jar. Okay. But what I think has made a difference is because I'm harvesting the keywords now, um, I'm getting much more, the sales have increased. And that's the, the only difference I can see that's, that I've So only one that matters, right? <laughs> <laughs> the sales. The sales yeah. increase, and that's at the end of the so, day, that's the only thing that matters. I can see that in the t-shirts, you know, some of the things I've done on the t-shirts this year where I've harvested the the keywords using the auto, the test, and the exact, um, just as you told me, and I've got my little card here where I make little notes on how to do it. <laughs> this is my crib sheet. If I lose that, I'm stuffed. I've got to watch your video again. <laughs> um, and I did it on the Hero book this year as well. So I actually increased my sales by about 60. Well, I increased my profit actually by 66%. Year over year? Wow. Yeah. Oh, just okay. Over so Q4 this past 2021 versus Q4 2020. Yeah. That's um, amazing. On the hero book. Yeah. I, I'm looking heroes. forward to your, I'm looking forward to, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly in the same boat. Like I have hundreds of thousands of products, but like 95% of my revenue comes from two products. And that's the same, same boat where it's because of when you rank a product and um, it's at the top of the rankings. It's just such a massive difference where it's uh, outsells, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of other books or in my case, T-shirts. But um, 
just because of that sales volume. So it's it's crazy. So I'm, I'm looking forward to Q, hearing your results Q4 this year and maybe another 60% uh, increase. Uh, oh, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? I'll be in the Bahamas by then. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do another video. You'll be on the beach. Um, <laughs> Unless Amazon has scuppered me for some reason, somehow. I don't know how. We Sorry. won't talk about that. So knock on wood. Um, <laughs> it, did anything, so you set, set up this campaign structure, um, the auto, testing performance and i'll link a video to um that as well it's a, a live i did pretty recently that kind of goes over that structure and um kind of my current structure that i'm using that um, janice is using as well uh did anything surprising come from that hero product that any keywords that came up that were surprising to you that were selling and yeah. working that you wouldn't have thought of and i've thought of an example for you um because it doesn't give away what i did so if you imagine you're the person who's got to buy Christmas presents, I mean, I am that person in my family. You might be in yours, but there's some people that are really hard to buy for. So my dad, he's 87, and he's okay. really hard to buy for. He doesn't leave the house. But every year I buy him a tin of biscuits, and every year I buy him a Sudoku book. And what was happening was people were searching for tin of biscuits on Amazon. They weren't. I mean, this is just the example. And then they were finding my book because Amazon was serving it to them somehow. And because they were buying it, tin of biscuits was showing up in my keywords. I thought, that's weird because I'm not selling tin of biscuits. But everybody who's buying the tin of biscuits is buying the Sudoku book. And so it's worth advertising against the tin of biscuits, even though it's nothing to do with the book. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with it. People are buying these things together. And enough of them are buying them together that Amazon put that into the auto campaign and then it got picked up by the keywords. Now it's quite, you know, it's quite, um, it's quite good value to advertise against the tin of biscuits because nobody's thought of it. Yeah, a hundred percent. So that could be, I mean, depending on the, the other competition for tin of biscuits, it could be a low cost per click for that search term. And also, if it converts as well, I understand that Amazon, you don't have to bid so high because it's converting well. Amazon don't make you, it's not solely on bid where Amazon shows you the, um, shows the advert. It's also on conversions. And because it's converting against her biscuits, you're not having to pay so much. That's, so that's actually a good point. And, and no one really knows how the Amazon ad or any of Amazon's algorithms work. Uh, I don't even think most people that work there and work on these algorithms know exactly how they work because there's so many different moving parts to them. But it is pretty well speculated that there is some sort of hidden quality score to your ads based on conversion rates and how well they convert. Similar to like a Google ads, which is a little more documented, but it's, it's again, heavily speculated that Amazon ads works very similarly with having some kind of hidden metric where you don't have to pay as much when you have relevancy and convert high conversion versus someone that doesn't, they're going to have to pay a little bit more for the privilege of getting their ad served. So that's a really interesting point. The other thing I want to point out is with this tin of biscuits uh, example, where it's like something you never even thought of is every single search term on that customers are typing on Amazon has some level of traffic on it that is coming through that search term. And the more search terms that you can appear for, whether it's, you know, incredibly relevant or, you know, or hyper relevant to your product or it's not, it's like the tin of biscuits. Uh, that's just more traffic going to your product and the more traffic, the more orders and sales generally. So having that broad, approach even if it's something you might not expect or even is maybe something that doesn't convert as well as you know maybe this tin of biscuits example that sounds like it does convert really well even if it doesn't um if you as long as you're getting some kind of conversions off it you can be, do that profitably at whatever bid pricing you're just increasing your sales overall across all these different search terms instead of just focusing on just a couple and it makes me think that next year I might actually run um, ads against those products. So I might look for the fancy tins of biscuits that you're going to buy your dad for Christmas and run you the should. book advert against those You should 100%. Products. 
And just yeah. let Mar Mercer handle all that because that's all you can automate that whole thing with the product ads. And um, and that's one of the, my favorite things about automatic campaigns. So if anyone's still on the fence about using automatic campaigns, it's for the product targeting. So whenever you see in your search terms that ASIN that appears, it means you're showing up on this product and getting impressions and clicks for it. So that's just more traffic and you're stealing sales, especially if it's a competitor. Uh, but there's also the complimentary products and so forth. So it's just more ways to get traffic. And from what I've seen, just with how many different products are on Amazon, if you look at your placements on your automatic campaigns, I would bet most of those, the product placement, so when your ads on those products, is getting far more impressions than your rest than just your search result uh rest of search or top top of search results that's what it's been in my case so and i wouldn't be surprised if that's the case for most automatic campaigns um so definitely um i would recommend product ads and they can work extremely well one of my best in this past q4 for for my hero product was comp competing uh, products to mine and not just directly related to mine, especially with gift giving holidays like Christmas, people aren't necessarily looking like, uh, okay, I'm looking for a fishing shirt. And then I'm only, I'm only looking at fishing shirts. No, they're looking at kind of like a bunch of different stuff. Cause people do have a lot of different hobbies and so forth. And when they see something they like, they purchase, you can like the <laughs> tin of biscuits. You can, it sounds like a sale. That's Sorry, a great sound. <laughs> I don't know how annoying it can really get because it means you're making money. So it's um... my aim was to get to the point where my husband came in and went, that noise is really annoying. Can you turn it off? And I'd be like, no, I can't. No, sorry. <laughs> so even if it's not relevant, so like my hero product, uh, product targeting did uh, prefer. It was one of my best performing campaigns. It was targeting products that weren't even related to the product that I was selling. They were just other products that were also selling pretty well. Um, and they performed and you know i'm taking sales from these other ones and you know that leads to your ranking versus taking down some of their ranking and all those different parts so product uh, targets is definitely something to explore i would say for everybody so i need to know how to do that on merch job cameron please can i have another video it's so in I that video it's in the live that i did has the product targeting in there so the product check boxes that you'll see in the promotions uh feature um, that is the product targeting ad. So it is in that li that live. So definitely check that out. Um, and I'll link that in the video for everyone else at home as well. So when did, how long have you been running ads for? When did you get started with that for each of the different platforms? I, well, I started as soon as they allowed us to. Um, they gave us a code, didn't they? And we had for to... Merch. Yeah. For, okay. Yeah. Uh, so you were one of the the first. It was back. It was 2018, I believe, because that's when I got started. Where the little code at the bottom of your dashboard. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. So you probably have two accounts now. I have quite a lot of accounts because I've got <laughs> one for each country and each product. Each. Okay. Um, you know. So I've got merch. You know, UK. Yep. US. What have I got? And then I've got the European ones: France, Italy, Spain, Germany. We haven't got you might, find, yet. you might find an extra US account in there if you take a look. Yeah, I, know I, have. I have two. Okay. Yeah, I do too, which is good, especially if you end up scaling out because I'm actually running into uh, campaign limits and, or uh, more ad limits now with lottery campaigns, but having a backup uh, ad account for that to, for your merch products isn't the worst thing. So getting in early has its perks for sure. That's one of the things when I got merch job, trying to link them all in, get them all into merch job, but I did that that you did answer all my questions at that point trying yeah, to get all in. we we don't know what the deal is with it uh, and we've we've tried working with amazon i don't know what it is with it's it seems to be the the european markets or the i guess the non-us ones for whatever reason have trouble syncing so we we gotta do some uh fiddling to kind of force that sync to the the api so we can read all that data but um for the most what? part i haven't ran into anybody that hasn't been able to get them to sync at the end of the day but uh so if anybody is, is watching, is a merch star user that is having a problem syncing them, just let, shoot us a message in our in-app support and we'll uh, we'll help you out with that. So we've we've kind of nailed down some weird troubleshooting that works for some reason. So we don't know why, but. So you've been running uh, Merch by Amazon ads since uh, end of 2018, I think. I think it was like 
October, November, I think was when I started. So I would imagine you were probably around that same time. Um, KDP, about when did you start with the, with them? Well, I think I have that straight away as soon as I started. So I must have, I must have put automatic campaigns on um, once I saw stuff selling. So probably around the same time then. I would yeah, imagine. I think so. Okay. Awesome. And that's another benefit for everybody that's not uh, is, is interested in KDP or hasn't heard of it. You get access to advertising right away. You're not waiting for tear ups. Um, that could eventually happen with Merch by Amazon as well. No one really knows, but they have been rolling out advertising to where I've even seen people at tier 100 on Merch getting access to advertising. And Seller Central gets it right away too. So it's pretty much just Merch that you have to like uh, move up in order to get that so every other platform I've seen right away so you can start promoting your products uh, and launching them the thing I did was um, I did advertise on my own books um, you... my hero books got two other books that kind of sometimes get bought alongside it so I advertised all three books on the other book. like within the book itself um, no against I, I advertised oh, I see. these product codes because I got annoyed because every time I looked at my page I could see other people's books on my sponsored you know the banner yep. at the bottom and I was like mm, I think I quite like my book there thanks <laughs> so I advertised it there as well that's actually that's a great this so that's actually a strategy I call them blocker campaigns but it's basically you're targeting your own products with ads with your own products to block competition from having those slots. Uh, and they work really well. So it's the, kind of the opposite of like trying to steal competition away from by targeting competi competing products, you're blocking your competitors from stealing your sales. So with just coming out of Q4 uh, and kind of like how big of a deal Q4 is for, I would say, I would say the majority of sellers, what would you say is the biggest challenge you face in achieving the su success that you did in Q4? And what were, were the biggest takeaways that you're going to bring into this next year's holiday season? Q4 is really important because I didn't realize that my first Q4, that it, because what it does is it gives your, all your products you sell in Q4 get rank and they get reviews and it kind of, the rising tide floats all ships, you know, it kind of carries it through into the following year it gives your book kind of credibility or your t-shirt credibility but the one problem i hit this year and it's kind of being a victim of your own success was the cash flow because sure. i had quite a lot of money in the business i you know operate as a limited company i had quite a lot of money in the business i thought i'd be fine and in the end i had to pump in savings because you're paying for adverts in november and december you, i mean amazon were billing me pretty much daily in the end and um or multiple times a day depending on your your limit yeah. and you know it's coming in from different countries as well in different lemon currencies and then of course you're not getting the sales coming into it's two months delay on kdp as opposed to one mm. month on march so the bulk of it's not going to come in till the end of february and i've you know had to fund that and i'm yeah. going to have to have more money next year to get through that otherwise you don't you know you're not making the profit are you but what I think is, providing you're under your ACOS, of course, you're getting your organic sales as well. It's like um, an ATM, a cash machine. If you had a cash machine where you could put five pounds in and it's spitting 10 pounds back, you're going to keep putting five pounds in, aren't you? But yep. You've got to have the five pounds to put in. You can't run out of five pounds. Otherwise, you can't get your 10 pounds back. I, I love that analogy. And I have a very similar viewpoint on advertising. Uh, where if someone asked me what my advertising budget is, I don't have one. I don't have any sort of advertising budget whatsoever. It's how as much as needed because if you, as long as you're hitting profitable ads or break even at worst case, I'm gonna put in an unlimited amount of money or as you know as far as reasonably I can do to get those sales out of it due to ranking and so forth. So. I love that analogy because that's uh, 100% right. Like if, if I said I was going to give you $2 for every dollar you gave me, you're going to find every dollar you possibly can to keep making that happen. But uh, for those of, um, those of you that haven't gone through a Q4 or I guess like not even just Q4, but maybe more so like having a product that really takes off where you need to keep pumping in ads because one of the worst things you can do, especially during the last couple of weeks of 
that holiday sales period before Christmas is to stop running ads. That's the the last thing you'd want to do and let you know your competitors outrank you and so forth, which then leads into the new year um, and not achieving the rank that you possibly could have is to keep those ads going. And the amount in ad spend increase those last few weeks compared to you know this time of year, more of a normal sales period is many multiples higher. Um, in my case personally, and you can speak to yours if you'd like to as well, I spent in a 30 day time frame over that from that Cyber Monday to end of the holiday sales period, probably six or seven times as much as I would in a normal 30 day period. So it's something you need to account for um, when it comes to that cash flow with those delays, which merch is 30 ish days. Uh, I guess 30 is 60 from the start of the month to kind of that the end of the month payout, but um, sounds like KDP is a little bit longer even, so even more of a, a cash flow challenge. Yeah, it's another month. Um, and also, there's a delay, isn't there? So there's a delay in, so with merch, we know when we've sold a t-shirt, that's it, you get that cha-ching. But with KDP, um, you don't find out you've sold it until the book actually ships. Oh, so every okay. day, what I was doing at the same time every day from my hero product, I was writing down the BSRs in Canada, UK, and US. So I could check that my sales were still improving. Interesting. Do you get the data through your Amazon ads? Do you see that that, that order data is pretty much live? No, I think there's a delay there as well. They, they're known to be unreliable and there's a delay. So I was checking my BSRs to check that because they were still going down, I knew I was selling more than the day before. That's a good and way I was to do also it. Checking the ACOS as well, but you've got a but you've got that delay. Yeah, that's interesting. As far as like the cash flow challenge, I don't know that I have like great advice for um, people. Uh, I use credit cards for all my um, Amazon advertising, so just the built-in delay with a credit card itself kind of helps offset that. Um, but it can still be challenging for sure, depending on. Uh, you know, I've hit credit card limits in the past and um, it's something you want to be careful of and uh, make sure you have another card ready if that's the case. If you don't have limits that can, you know, hit that high spend if you're expecting it. Um, I don't know if you have any advice uh, saving up uh, throughout the year to make sure you have kind of a, a stash for that expected ad spend. But I don't know. Do you have any tips or maybe something you'll do different next year? I've never thought about using credit cards. Um, I've only... I run the business as a limited company in the UK. So we've got a business bank account. Um, my husband, he does a completely different thing, but we're both in the same business account because that's how we started. And so um, we ran out of money and I had to say to him, oh, you know, we've run out of money. I'm going to have to pump some personal savings in. Is that okay with you? And he was, he's, it's not that I've got to ask my husband before I do things because he trusts me, but it's just respectful, isn't it? To say, sure. just about to raid the joint account and pump it all back <laughs> into the business. And we're not going to be paid by Amazon for two months. And he's like, okay. <laughs> um, you know, I was just lucky I had those savings that I could do it. Really. Yeah. Well, it sounds um, like it paid off. So looking forward off. to February for sure. Uh, I mean, and I know everyone normal, on merch is probably looking forward to the end of this month. I know I am. Spent my normal ad spend times 10, 15. Wow. Okay. So even a bigger increase. So, which, which happens at those when you have, especially like a hero type product that just kind of goes gangbusters. Cause especially during the holidays, the traffic is just so much more immense than what it is during the normal year. So being prepared for that. So yeah, I would say, I guess my, my two cents would be like saving throughout the year. Credit cards can help with that if that's something, which I, I really like credit cards. I don't know anything about like UK, how that works, if there's differences with credit cards. But with um, the cards I have through the businesses, I get up to a four, I, basically it converts to four and a half percent back on all my Amazon advertising spend for the first hundred thousand dollars I spend every year. So it is a significant cash back opportunity as well, depending on what's available, you know, with the, the banks in your country and so forth. So, um, for anyone here uh, in the U.S. is Chase Sapphire Reserve, um, and it's a personal Chase one. I got to do some transferring stuff, but it ends up working out. My buddy turned me on to it because he's an Amazon seller and he was doing that. But uh, something to check out and uh, consider if you're if you're already spending tens of thousands of dollars, tens of thousands on Amazon ads, 
you know, it doesn't hurt to get a few points back on it. So that's interesting. Yeah, because I have a personal credit card I do that on. I didn't think of doing it with the Amazon ads. That's very interesting. Yeah, and some of it, yeah, the way the one I have works, I'm sure it's going to just be different with depending on what's available, but it's 3% back on the ads. And then when I transfer it to my personal, it's um, a one and a half percent multiple. So it's like four and a half percent total. So it, it definitely, add, you know, I mean, it's an extra four or five thousand uh, dollars on a, almost a free vacation uh, <laughs> per year just from the money I'm spending no matter what. So something to check out. Yeah, I will. That's a very good tip. Thank you. Uh, what impact do you think your success this Q4? And we kind of touched on this a little bit already. We'll have for this year. I'm definitely going to make another book that goes alongside my hero book. And I've got the idea for that. I used um, A plus content as well to um, display the other books on oh, the hero book. So I know that I was selling probably one in 10 were buying one of the other books as well. I So I wasn't actually familiar with A plus content was available for KDP. Uh, would you be able to just like briefly explain what A plus content is for anyone that's not familiar or doesn't have that option in KDP yet? Yeah, we've, we've only just got it actually. I think we got it around September, October time. So you can um, display, other people had it, but not KDP. So traditional publishers had it. Okay. And I think um, people who were doing Fulfilled by Amazon had it. But basically you can um, add content to your um, description page for your book and you can choose what to put on there. So you can put photos on, you can put more text on, you can put photos of the interior of the book. But in the end, and, and I have another series of books that I do do that in to show what the inside of the book looks like. And I use some mock-ups as well with um, Playset. But in the end on this hero book, I put I literally put the other products on. So you can add products on and you can have a little comparison chart between, below them. Like this book's got, it's hard to say without, I don't want to give away my niche, but this no, book's- No, don't got, do that, don't do um, that. Supposing it was a coloring book, you could be this book's got coloring pictures in and then the next book's got puzzles in and you put little ticks on what they've got in them got so it. that people can compare products. That's a great idea. It's, yeah, so like the A plus content, if you've ever been on anybody watching, if you've ever seen a product page and you scroll down and their description keeps going, they have really nice pictures and all the different infographic type stuff, that's your A plus content. Um, now I wanna ask with, because um, with if you're selling on Seller Central, so like the FBA, FBM, you need to be brand registered. So you need a trademark and be brand registered to get access to that A plus content as well as some other benefits as well to being brand registered. But that's one of the bigger ones is having A plus content. Is that a requirement with KDP? No, you can put them on any wow. of the books. So if you wanted, to, sometimes people like um, collections as well. So if you had say a notebook with a floral cover, you might also choose to do your graph paper with the floral cover. And then you could put your, on your A plus content, you could put the other book alongside. So you have your two books together. And then once you've made your A plus content for one book, you copy, you, you basically tick the books you want it to appear on. So it's the same on all of them. Or supposing yeah. you had a book for kids aged two to three, and then you had a book a follow on book for kids aged three to four and one for kids aged four to five. You could make A plus content with all three books going across the bottom of your page and then display it on all the, all the books. Same. That's great. So you get cross marketing and yeah, if you, that book is something that or something that they're not quite looking for, but it's close. They got other options. So you're still getting the sale or buying multiple as well. Um, yeah. I would point out with the A plus as well. One of the big benefits there is how much more room in it for description and keywords specifically that you have for this for SEO purchase purposes. So you, you just have more opportunity to fill your pr product with even more keywords to appear on more search terms because Amazon does index, um, which what I mean by index is that you appear for a search term. That means you're indexed for it if you're appearing for it. Um, so you have an opportunity to appear for even more search terms uh, than you would just because you don't have as much room. So you can do a little bit more, I don't want to say keyword stuffing, but just, you know, more opportunity for it. 
Uh, you might know more than me, but I think Google indexes the A plus content as well. That I'm not sure of. I would assume so. I, I would be surprised if they didn't. While we're on keywords, I was going to say, of course, with KDP, we get seven backend keywords that we can That's write as well. And I think they're absolutely crucial for your auto ads because Amazon's using those to determine who to show your auto ads to in the first place. You beat me to it. I was actually going to ask a question if you could share any best practices when it comes to SEO <laughs> and kind of how that impacts your advertising. So we'll just kind of jump right into that. Um, so sorry to cut you off, but yeah, let's, uh, well, yeah, let's talk about that. Cause I, I agree like SEO, not as, not everybody thinks of advertising and SEO together and they're very much connected. Well, I'd done, I'd done a free SEO course when I did the blog, you see, so I had some inkling about SEO. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm an SEO expert, but I could see that the keywords are crucial. So the title and the subtitle of a book really really matter and you can't change them once the book's gone live but you can change your back-end keywords and that's where people go wrong i mean i think first of all they don't fill them up so you've got i can't remember 49 50 characters for each one and you've got seven boxes and amazon mix and matches the keywords within each box so you need to fill them up you can't just put coloring book you've got to put unicorn coloring book for girls kids will it it will mix and match them all up so that you've then you're listed for unicorn coloring book coloring book for girls coloring book for kids unicorn coloring book for girls unicorn coloring book for kids having that and broader so, yeah know, search terms so you're appearing on more search terms because the more search terms you appear on like we talked about earlier is the more opportunity the more traffic you have available to your listing and then there's no good putting unicorn coloring book as well in the second keyword term. You've got to think of something else, which can be tricky depending on the book. Not duplicating your keywords because Amazon, once a keyword's kind of in your listing somewhere, like you don't need to keep repeating it necessarily. No. Um, I guess the one thing I will point out is that uh, the exception would be the title of your, what pretty much whatever product, the title has the most, SEO juice. It sends the strongest signal to Amazon of, hey, this is what this product is. And even further is that first half of the title, whatever comes first, is going to have that strongest SEO signal to Amazon um, and help you rank more for that, the, um, those keywords that you have in that um, title. And also, I think people do sometimes forget that we spell things differently in the UK. So if I write, you know, humor, I'll also write it with the UK spelling as well to get both words in i don't know if amazon works that out itself but maybe it does maybe it doesn't they do like misspellings i don't know if they consider it a misspelling or not but i have a similar tip um for the u.s the u.s has a lot of spanish speakers uh and uh where you can have spanish in your listing too to index for spanish uh search terms which a lot of people don't do so if you are looking to kind of increase um, some of that search term volume uh, or number of keywords you're indexing for. That'd be an option as well is uh, uh, putting some Spanish in your listing. This was from a podcast. I'm going to give a shout out to the Ad Badger podcast, even though they're a competitor to us, but um, they do have a great podcast. And I'm, I'm a big proponent of just learning from everybody you can and just kind of absorbing it and um, doing what you can with that information. And uh, it was uh, Stephen Pope, I believe, was on there from my Amazon guy. He's an Amazon consultant, but... Um, According to him, the uh, images in your A plus content, like the um, alternative text form, so it's not a, it doesn't appear to the customers or on your page, but those index as well. So it's an area where okay, maybe you don't want to like have Spanish in your listing. For example, you can put some Spanish in your um, um, alt image tags and still gets indexed there. I haven't tested this, so this is just kind of like passing on um, some things I've. I've heard uh, maybe it's a rumor, but uh, uh, Stephen Pope uh, is pretty well respected in the space. So I uh, another option as well to uh, increase your uh, foot footprint for your product. How much time would you say you spend per week managing your campaigns, or or how what what kind, what does your frequency look like when it comes to optimizing your campaigns or bids? Could you tell us a little bit about that? I use Smartbid for my testing and performance ads. 
although I have a little delve every now and again to check they're okay. So what I do is I usually run through my ads once a week on a Monday. Okay. And I change the bids myself on the auto ads depending on whether they are within ACOS or not. If the ACOS is profitable or not, basically, okay. then I tweak them. But I don't use much shot to tweak the auto ads because I was running into problems where it kept turning them down or turning them up. It didn't know when to stop, if that makes right. sense. Yep. And we yep, it does, that, it does for smart bids, which um, frame one, not using Mercer, not using smart bids. Smart bids is an automation where it adjusts bids really slowly for any targets, so like keywords or um, your auto targeting groups and for targets that are getting at least a couple orders within a certain time frame. And regarding like the, we, we have ran into, uh, we actually have a pretty big change coming up with the smart business, just our, the way bids are adjusted in general. Um, Cause we did run into it where it would keep adjusting low bids, for example, when there wasn't necessarily enough data to make those changes. So we have some uh, upcoming changes that, that won't over optimize them so much. So it sounds like once a week, um, on average, you're jumping in and maybe making some manual changes and then kind of have some automations with Merchjar going with the smart bids for the bid yeah. optimization. Okay. I've got the smart bids going on the keywords, just not the auto ads, because I knew, you know, when I looked at them, they weren't doing quite what I wanted. And it could have been the way I set them up. I mean, I, you know, I might not have done it right, but it just wasn't quite working for me. Um, but it is on the keywords. And then as we get nearer to quarter four, that's all I do is ads, really. I just check them. Because if you're spending a lot of money a day, and I I was spending a lot of money a day, you need to check the shipping times every day to make sure they've, they're still shipping. I'd wake up in the morning, they'd have run out of money overnight. Um, I was checking them just before I went to bed to, to see if they were still in, in budget. Um, and also, to, you know, to, just to make sure they were still profitable. And that Amazon, sometimes it picks something very, um, very generic, you know, Fox stuff or something like that. And then you're thinking, oh, my God, it's bidding 31 cents on Fox stuff. I think I might either turn that down or turn that off because that's just way too generic. You know, it's costing me a fortune on that one keyword. And then SmartBids is not turning it down fast enough because it, SmartBids doesn't realize it's just like, gift for men or something it's just bidding way over high on that because it yeah yeah there's no context to it right like it's not going to know it's like oh that's broad you know very generic you know funny t-shirt kind of thing there's no way to, yeah. to program that in but uh i think you you highlight a good point is like even when you're using automations like there's they they can work really well and save a lot of time where you're not having to do all this like tedious stuff and uh, they can get you close to kind of what your targets are, your t target A cost. But I still, even if you're running automations, you should still be going into your ad accounts. Um, I Once a week is probably pretty similar to what I do. I'm doing maybe a little bit more now with kind of like the restarting of ads in January, just pop in maybe every few days. And I'm still making some manual adjustments, kind of just... Uh, uh, kind of correcting the ship a little bit uh, and making, helping kind of speed up that optimization. Because if something is like way off, even if you have an automate automation, generally we recommend any kind of changes to be pretty small incremental changes. But if you can see you're like way off on something or something is like, hey, I got 5% ACOS on this target and it's got 15 orders, let's bump that bid like up, you know, 30% and just kind of see what happens because it's obviously converting well, whatever, where that might have taken maybe a couple weeks to, to happen with an automation. Uh, and the other thing is just kind of like getting familiar with your ad account and what's being targeted for your different products, looking at your search terms, uh, just kind of get a feel for what's going on. The more you get it in into your ad account, you're just going to have a better grasp of just, hey, here's what's going on with my aunt. Amazon account and here's what's what's working here's what's not search terms that are not to mention just the product research opportunities as well especially for merch or KDP where we can create products kind of on the fly and on demand using the, your search terms to see what people are searching for and I know I've been able to find search I've seen search terms and there's like oh I've never thought about that let's let's create some products around this search term 
So you're going to be making biscuit tins next quarter for all you, Cameron. Yeah, <laughs> t-shirts. Yeah, it's Tins yeah, me and a thousand other people. Um, so, but that's, yeah, that's, and that's one of the better way, um, one of the best ways to use your search terms as well as, yeah, just like your product research, like we're in print on demand. So take advantage of that in any way you can and use those search terms. Like you're paying for that data. You're using, use it in every way possible. So yeah. But that's Merch Jar did the heavy lifting for me. I was only looking at the outliers really. And then the brilliant thing, oh my goodness, Cameron, you saved me so much time because you're getting nearer to Christmas and I've got 101 other things to do, you know, apart from KDP and merch. And then, of course, the shipping stops. They've got to turn the bids down fast. Otherwise, we're just spending money because people are clicking on it and then realizing they're not going to get it in time. And that's costing me money. And so the minute that we got to the shipping, I was able to go into Merch Jar and dial the budgets down, to dial all the keywords down, just like in seconds, really. I could have been sat here for days, I think. Yeah, and using if you're using Ad Console, relieved. yeah. Uh, and I did, I did the same thing, go in and just an 80% drop on all my bids, just across everything, except my hero products, because what ended up happening with Merch, I don't know if this happened with KDP, but there's almost different prioritization based on your sales volume. So with Merch, they had, uh, if you had better best selling products, those were selling for almost a week longer than every other product. And I had two that that ended up for, so I could remove, so even though I was kind of doing 80% across the board, I didn't want to reduce bids on, or bid budgets on stuff that was still selling. So I was able to just, hey, don't, you know, let's remove these ASINs from our results and we're gonna just cut everything else. I did think it went on later this year. I'd, I'd kept a note of the BSRs last year and when they stopped shipping. And I'd also kept, I, I'd also marked on that because like I said, I checked the BSRs every morning and I'd marked when I'd got badges and things like that and everything. I said to, said to my husband, you know, I'm working. I think I was two weeks earlier on everything this year because of the ads, I think, because I was harvesting the keywords. So where I hit, you know, and got a certain badge um, on it last quarter for, I was doing that two weeks earlier this year. That's amazing. So that's another good point uh as far as like the way you're doing it is pretty manual i don't know if there's really a great way to track like badges and stuff other than that um i do want to point out just with merch jar that we do store all of your search term data on our servers uh where on amazon if you're just using ad console you can only see the last 65 days of your search term data so when it comes to this next Q4, you wanna be able to go back and look at the Q4 we just went, we're in and see what was performing because the search terms are gonna be different. There's gonna be like kind of holiday specific search terms that aren't performing throughout the whole year that you wanna focus on and target this upcoming Q4 in 2022, the, th the things that were working and Merchart makes that easy to just go back to whatever date range you want and see what the the performance was of your search terms or your campaigns, the keywords, and you can take those performing keywords and run campaigns against those upcoming as well, where they may not perform all year, but they do in the holidays. Um, and the reason I, I point this out is because of kind of timing with the APIs, we're able to look at the last 60 days of data. So once we get 60 days out, Merchjar can't bring in that data anymore. That's all. Amazon gives us and we're still in that 60 day range for this past holiday season. So you can, we can grab all that data for you. We'll save it and we'll just keep adding to it. So you'll always have that data to go back and um, reference. And not that you can't do that at all with Amazon. You can, there's ways you can do it. It's just not super easy. You have to download reports. They come in Excel spreadsheets. So there's a lot of manual work that we just take care of for you, which is kind of the whole idea with Merch Jar, just saving time. But uh, uh, I was going to ask you, you've actually been one of, you were one of our earlier uh, Merch Jar users since we were in beta earlier this, um, earlier this, or last year, I should say. And you've kind of already talked about already uh, how Merch Jar has helped save you time. Is there any other areas that's helped you save you time or manage your campaigns? Or do you have a favorite Merch Jar feature? I think the brilliant thing was that I was allowed to try it for 30 days before I had to pay any money. Because, you know, there's so many things out there. And sometimes I try them and think, oh, this is just 
it's not working for me or it doesn't, you know, I don't understand it or it doesn't fit me. And, you know, you can try it for 30 days, can't you? And see how you get Still on. Still can. Yep. Absolutely free. No credit card re required. So to make sure. So yep, absolutely. You've got nothing to lose, really. And I that really, you know, I did like that. I don't think I use it properly. I don't use recipes. Um, I, I probably don't use any of the fancy features because I need I need some more videos, Cameron, to explain it to me. I know. So. I know. We're, it's in progress. <laughs> and then so I can make it's... myself another little crib sheet because that's what I've got. Um, and I've got, you know, I can't do it without that. And that I'm just using the basic that I understood what I meant to be doing because you told me specifically, do this. And I followed I when we got to quarter four and you were like, this is how to turn down all your ads. And I thought, thank goodness for that. He showed me so. And then I'm doing, I'm following along. I've got two monitors. I've got you on one of them <laughs> and I'm doing it on the other one because otherwise I haven't got time to learn ads to that extent. I do try and learn from traditional authors as well, because when I started KDP, there was, um, the merchants weren't doing it. And so I had traditional authors that I followed on YouTube and that. And I also found this guy called um, Robert J. Ryan, who'd written a book called Amazon Ads Unleashed. And although a lot of what he said doesn't apply to people who are KDPers, some of it is eBooks and where they release a series and that sort of thing. But some of what he says on ads is extremely interesting and not things I'd heard before. So, for example, he says that Amazon don't take a lot of notice of your ads until you're spending $100 a day. And hmm. he talks about if you're targeting a lot of keywords that you need to be spending a reasonable amount of money because otherwise Amazon can't target all those keywords with the budget that you've set. Because Merch Shards let me target a lot of keywords that have had to up the budget which probably doesn't answer your question. Um, I don't tend to use the dashboard very much in Merch Jar because it kind of goes up and down and um, it looks red, it looks green. I don't know, it looks reasonable to me. Well, it's, 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 honestly, it sounds like you're using like the most important features. Cause I mean, we have all these like features and recipes um, is our big flagship feature that we're building out that that is a newer one we're still building out that functionality i don't do a ton with recipes i have a few that i run but you're kind of using the most important ones like the promotions where it's automatically moving those keywords from one campaign to another i would say that's probably the most time saving feature in merch jar in my opinion just because of how tedious it is to do that in ad comms because I, I have done that before we even ha we, we had that feature because when we launched our beta that didn't even exist to do that it was pretty much yeah. just bulk um um your bulk actions of changing your your bids but um yeah it sounds like but you're doing all is... the right things already so and you don't have to complicate i think that speaks to like you don't need to do like the most complicated things with amazon ads to find success with it i mean i'm quite interested in the recipes because I don't really understand what I'm doing with them. But what you're letting people do is people who do understand what they're doing with them. You're letting them create recipes on there that I can then use. Yep. So, so that's I'm our good. recipe world. So we, we just launched that a week or two ago, um, not too long ago. Um, but that's exactly that where um, people can submit recipes. And uh, I'll put a link to um, where you can submit recipes. So we're actually running a contest as well, which I'm going to bring up until the end of the month for everybody that submits a recipe and everyone that we publish, because we're going to review to make sure it's not something we've duplicated or it's something that's functional and works. Uh, everyone that we publish, you're going to get um, credit to, to your Mercer account. And um, whoever's recipes they submit that we like the most um, by the end of the month, uh, we're going to give you a 25,000 coin credit, which is a $150 value. People who know more about ads than me, who are clever in that aspect than me, that I can use their knowledge. And this is what, what I enjoy about this, is you can take knowledge from different people. So I'm hoping people will have a, some YouTube up that says, this is my recipe, this is how it works. My recipe's on Merch Jar. And I think, oh, that's exactly what I need. I'll go and use their recipe for Merch Jar. And I don't have to think it up myself. That's 100% what we envision is kind of that collaborative uh, and social sharing. Um, so, you know, someone like uh, an RJ that you mentioned can have their own recipe collection that you can download right from our uh, recipe world is what we're calling it. Um, and you can import those right into your account. So that's 100% what we're doing. It's like having your own advertising manager who's an expert in advertising 
without having to pay them so much, you know? That's a, honestly a great point. Hiring someone to run your ads, usually it's off of some percentage of sales and where it's really hard to justify when you're not spending tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars per month in advertising. So for, and that's, that's a hundred percent what we wanted to build is ha and base our pricing off of is just having it accessible to, to everybody, no matter their budget. I mean, it's, it's worth it, isn't it? Because I think that the sales have increased enough to justify the cost of, well, easily to justify the cost of merch chart. We appreciate that. Yeah, that's a hundred percent of all, everything goes right back into the development. Every single dollar we get is development and servers um, to make the best product that we can and to provide the value that, um, you know, that we're asking for. So if, if we're asking for money, we definitely want to, uh, and you're paying for our service, we want to make sure that service over delivers. That's hundred percent our goal. And at this point, it's not going to be right for everybody, depending on what exactly you need, but that's why we give the 30 day free trial to make sure it is. Um, but if you do want to support Merch Jar, subscribing, buying our coin bundles is definitely the best way to do it. Um, and that's going right back into the development. So we can keep building out these features and make it more flexible, uh, and more powerful. It's not just something that's selling, you know, thousands a day. It's some of the t-shirts that I've used and harvested the keywords on, um, the ones that are for particular occasions, they've sort of doubled their sales as well. And so if you're making, oh, I don't know, $200 on it, but then you're making $400, it's worth it, isn't it? Because all those extra dollars add up. They do. Yeah, it's and kind so of that aggregate and kind of where lottery campaigns, kind of the idea with that comes in as well is just kind of having... Uh, you know, a large product base that sells, you know, on, on an individual level, one product only sells maybe well, every three months, every six months or whatever, but in aggregate, and you're running ads to all these, it really adds up. And that was interesting in quarter four, because you see something sell both on the t-shirts and the books. And I think, oh goodness, that's never sold before. I've forgotten I made that. And then I was like, oh, it must be that lottery campaign. And I go and have a look and it was. For those people that are just getting started um, for the first time, what advice would you give them? I think you have to start small. I would, I would pick a product that's already selling and preferably one that's already got reviews and start with that. You start with an auto campaign at five, ten dollars You don't start big by any stretch of imagination because you've got to see what works and what doesn't. It is a learning process and it's a testing process, really. You can't just jump in with hundred. At, you know, $100 a day ad, can you? The lottery campaign, I would say to start with those as well, because they are low cost and they're low bids as well. We start at five cents, don't we? Well, that's what you told me to do. That's what I did. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, 100%. It's, um, I, it's okay, that's well, exactly what I would say. You've, you've definitely watched my videos. <laughs> <laughs> so I just do what I'm told. Because I'm making books, really, and you're my advertising manager, aren't you? So we start at the five cents, we start at the $10 a day or whatever, and see what happens. And then those products that do sell, that have got reviews, well, you know, you know in your head, if you've already got an established account, what your best sellers are, you must do. I mean, I know I've got one coming up for Valentine's Day, and, and so I've already got that one on the auto, the testing and the performance campaigns. But that's how you start and you start even those you start low with the with the budget and then see how it goes and once you've got it into profit below your your acos is below your what it should be then you up your budget last question for you how has your success on amazon amazon changed your life or your uh plans for the future um i've got i've got well young adults now and you know i've been a stay-at-home mum so as they've got older um, well, I used to do contests, actually, to keep my brain going when they were younger. Um, you know, you call them contests, don't you, in America? Competitions. I used to win things. And we didn't pay tax on it in the UK, so that was quite good. Um, but it just kind of put a bit of icing on the family cake. And so I was looking for something I could do from home that would keep my brain going, that would put a bit of icing on the family cake. But this is like really put a lot of icing on the family cake. And so I'm able to help help my sons more and I'm also but I'm able to work when I want and that's the thing if you know if it's a sunny day and I want to go to the beach I can do that or 
if um, you know my dad's got a problem and I've got to go and help him, then I, I'm not having to explain to somebody, oh, can I have an hour off this afternoon to go and do so-and-so? I didn't have to do that. And the money is still coming in. I don't have to worry about that. And it gives you such freedom in your life to live your life the way you want to live it, really, and to be able to help your family around you. And, and that's what this has given me, Merch and KDP. And I'm so grateful. And every Christmas, I email KDP and I email Merch and I say, thank you for giving me this opportunity because it's amazing. And you can't moan about Amazon, really, because, you know, they've given us this amazing chance to earn money from home as and when we want, working as and when we want. And that's incredible. Well, congratulations on your Q4 success. Thanks so much for taking the time to do this with me. I think this is going to be uh, incredibly valuable for our audience. I look forward to doing this this time next year and hearing about uh, <laughs> your Q4 success this year and just blowing it out of the water, seeing you on the beach uh, to do that. Again, thank you so much. Well, thank you, Cameron, for having me. It's been very interesting. And um, I really love March Jar. I'm going to keep on using it because it's helping me loads. Thanks so much. <laughs>